I see that a lot of people are struggling with trying to figure out what's wrong with their node graphs, where the logic is breaking, and they don't know even where to start sometimes. So I'm going to show you guys the best way to test out the logic in your node graphs using the log. So let's go ahead and look at our example here. This is from my last video where I was talking about tabs. Essentially, this sign here has a tab on it. And when I click on the tab, if we just look at it, it's going to say destroy cube. And when I click on this, it's supposed to destroy this cube right here. So let's go ahead and look at the node graphs that are connected here. I have two node graphs. I have a Boolean faction filter that's assigned to the tab and it filters out who's allowed to interact with it. And then I have a destroy object node graph that lives on the sign itself and it's supposed to destroy the entity with this GUID, which is the cube. However, for the sake of example, I actually broke the logic here in the node graph so that it doesn't do what it's supposed to. And I did this on purpose, obviously, so that I can show you guys how to use the log and how we can debug our code and fix our mistakes and finally get things working how they should. So let's go ahead and just double check that everything here doesn't work. Okay, so I'm here. So first of all, I can't interact with the sign at all. So that's a good start. So let's say you're just completely shocked, you're stumped, you have no idea what the issue is. So let's go ahead and try to debug this and figure it out. In the Miliastro sandbox, if you go up to the window tab here, there's a log button that you can click and it opens up the log. Now this is where all the magic happens with debugging. So what you want to do is you want to select the node graphs that you're having issues with. So in my case, it's this Boolean filter node graph here because it's the one that's filtering out who's allowed to interact with the tab or not, right? So if I click on this and I click on confirm selected, you'll see that when I walk into the sign now and we go into the log here, you'll see that there's stuff being displayed and there's stuff that's continuously being displayed every second. So what's actually going on here is every second the sign is checking, it's running this Boolean faction filter node graph to see who it can display the tabs to. If I just step out of the range, you'll see that it stops printing out. So let's go ahead and take a look, right? So what you can do with the log is really cool. You can actually click into this node graph. This is a node graph here. Whenever a node graph runs that you selected, it'll show up here when it runs. So if I click into here, and you'll see that it opens up the node graph inside of the sandbox. Now the cool thing here is that you can actually hover over these nodes and you can see what the input is and what the output is. So in my case here, I get the target entity, which is me, the player that walked into the radius of the hitbox. And then I query the faction. You can see that the faction comes out as one. And then I have an equal node here that will check the faction that came in and the faction that I put in here. Now you can see that obviously 1 and 112 don't equal and so the result ends up being no. And then in the node graph end node here, you'll see that the input is the output result boolean which comes out to no, which is why the boolean filter doesn't work. Now when you're in this view, you actually can't modify anything. It says here you can't modify the graph while in debug mode. You can't move things around. So if you want to move things around, make sure that you left the game and you just click escape and you can now edit the node here, the node graph right away. So now that we figured out what our issue is, we can go ahead here and just get rid of 112 and put one. And back in our log, if you wanna just clear everything, you can click on clear here and then click on test play. Now, if we walk into the sign, you'll see that the tab actually shows up. And if we go back to the log, you'll see that if we click into here and go into the node graph, well, there you have it. We have our input of one, and it compares it to one and the result is yes and the node graph ends up having the output of yes and so everything works and that's great. But now if I actually click on the tab and try to destroy the cube, nothing happens. So let's go ahead and see what's going on there. Inside of our log, let's just clear this. Let's go ahead into the destroy object node graph that I have that's attached to the sign and let's click on confirm selected. Since we know that this boolean filter is working, we can unselect it and confirm our selection and then let's go ahead and try to destroy the cube again. And back in our log, you'll see that we have a couple of things here. We have a print that printed out something and we have the node graph that ran. So let's go ahead and click inside the node graph here. And here we are. And in here where the logic runs for actually destroying the cube, we can see a couple of things here that are a bit different from what our earlier node graph was showing. So first of all, we have a couple of connections here. We have the event node that's connected to the double branch, which is connected to two other nodes. So let's go ahead and quickly see what our logic is doing. When a tab is selected, we put the tab ID into an equal and we compare it with this number two. And right away you can see that the tab that we selected was number one. You can see that tab ID here is one. We put it in as input one and the value of input one is one. And then inside of input two, when I'm checking it against, we put the value of two. So it's saying is one equal to two and obviously that's no. So the result goes into this double branch and the condition is no. So what ends up running is this print string 
and inside the print string, I have this not correct tab being displayed. Now this is actually what's really cool about print string is that it prints directly to the log so that if you ever have something specific that you want to watch out for, you can use this print string to print whatever you want to the log and it saves you a bit of headache having to hover over every node and try to see what's going on where. It just gets you the value of the thing you want printed onto the log right away so that you don't have to do all this back and forth. Now another cool thing here is that you can actually see which nodes ran by looking at the line that's connecting them. You see these orange lines here, right? So you can see that the connection between the event node and the double branch went successfully because there's an orange line connecting it. And you can see this number one here. This number one represents that this is the first connection between nodes that actually ran. And then we see this other orange line with a number two saying that this is the second thing that happened. However, the node graph between the double branch and the destroy entity node didn't run. And so there's no orange line. It's actually grayed out here. So you can actually just follow along the logic using the lines here to see which thing happened first, which thing happened second. And so just like that, we're able to see that this equal node ended up giving us a result of no which ended up giving our double branch this option here where we printed the string instead of destroying the entity. So all we have to do is just fix up this equal node. This is our problematic node right here because this double branch relies on this equal sign in order to function properly. So all we have to do is change the input two to a one in order to make sure that the correct tab is being selected and our result can be a yes. So let's go ahead and back out of our game and back in our script, let's change this to number one. And now let's go and walk up to our sign and click destroy cube. And there we go. It's been destroyed. We fixed our problem. Our detective work here is over. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our log real quick. We see that here the destroy object node graph got called. Let's just double click into this. And now you can see that our logic path went from going to the no to going to the yes. You can actually see this with the orange line being connected here. If we hover over the equal, we'll see that one equals one and the result is yes. And so there we go. We have successfully debugged our node graph.